السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Him for everything He has given us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us in every single way. My beloved sisters and daughters, I am really honored to be a part of this beautiful annual get-together of the graduates who are working not only in the field, but those who have graduated working in whatever way you are working. May Allah bless you and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you. May He continue to use you to serve the deen granting you success in this world and the next. When we say this world, obviously, your work, your sustenance, your families, your spouses, and inshallah, your children, those who do have, those who don't have, inshallah, you will have, and those who are not married, inshallah, we ask Allah to bless you with spouses, spouses who will be the coolness of your eyes. Amin. My beloved sisters and daughters, Something we need to know is as Muslimin, the first thing we need is sincerity of intention. I'm sure you've been hearing about it for quite a few days. So, or should I say for the sessions that you've had so far, sincerity of intention is one of the first and prime qualities we need to have. What we do, we do for the sake of Allah. Everything you do, bear in mind you have a grave that you are going to be lowered into. And that is if you are lucky. Unlucky, sometimes people disappear without a sight. And I'm sure you know that. Sometimes people, you know, they, their families know that they have died, but they have no remains of theirs because either it was a huge explosion or something else had happened. We ask Allah to grant us at least a good death. Amin. So sincerity of intention, there are many ways of looking at it. And I'm sure we've already studied so many different ways. But I want to mention one way of looking at it, and that is whatever you do in life, bear in mind you have a grave that you are going to be lowered into. That's it. Once you bear in mind you have a grave you are going to be lowered into, your contact with Allah becomes powerful. You know your maker, Allah, the one whom you are going to return to, Allah, his hands has the mercy that you and I are searching for and looking for. So my beloved sisters and daughters, let me tell you, it is important everything we do, let's tell ourselves, I am only here in the world for a certain period of time. I have a slot. Do you know what is the meaning of a slot? A little time frame. Like now they've asked me to speak seven o'clock to 7.30. I have a slot of 30 minutes. I will walk in at 7, I will walk out at 7.30. Subhanallah. In these 30 minutes, what do I need to do? As much as I can without wasting your time and without you wasting my time. It is an amana. It is from Allah. Gone are the days when we were children, we used to play games and waste our time and so on. No room for wasting time. The reason is, Wallahi, I do not know if I'm going to live this evening. Nor do you. None of you know if you are going to return home after the seminar, not even one. Wallahi. We might hear of some who've disappeared. You might hear of myself who disappeared. It's possible. So there is no room to be wasted, no time. You know, when people play football, they play cricket, they have a specific time or a specific number of overs. What is their job? Their job is to try their best to score as much as they can in the specified time. If they are just wasting standing with the ball, talking to each other, sitting, doing something, looking at the crowd, that's a pretty woman or that's a decent guy, all that would waste your time. Your aim and your focus is supposed to be to score one goal after another as much as you can even people who already have a score of 2-0 in football for example they will try to make it higher three four five am i right so this is why remember life is not a game it is a reality we are only drawing an example of this game so that it can be brought to us in the interim allah says he has brought us into existence in order to test us you might have heard so many interpretations of that let me give you one of the different interpretations today when allah says i have created you to test you wallahi it is so accurate i tell you why every one of us we have problems we have difficulties we have financial struggle we have sickness we have a problem at home we have a problem for example sometimes with our children with our neighbors with something else a problem at work a problem here a problem there nobody has a life 
free of problems. Nobody. That means those issues are placed, planned by Allah in order for us to live a few years to pass them one by one, test after test, after test, after test. And the hadith says, when Allah loves someone, He puts tests in their lives. If He does not love someone, there is no test for them. The reason is they have not sometimes yet entered the arena of the tests. Do you know what the arena of the test is? Let me give you an example. You see kuffar, Allah says, لَا يَغُرَّنَّكَ تَقَلُّبُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فِي الْبِلَادِ مَتَاعٌ قَلِيلٌ ثُمَّ do not let the, the luxury lives of the kuffar deceive you. It is just a pleasure for a little period of time. After that, they will be serving their sentence and they will have their punishment. So don't look at the kuffar and say, how come these are disbelievers? They are enjoying their life. They are having every luxury that they can think of. Yet you don't understand. They have not yet entered the game. They are not in the school. We are in the school, so we will be writing exams every year. Allah says quite clearly, do they not see that we test them every year, once or twice, major tests. Then they still do not repent to us. They are still not from amongst those who take heed. That is Allah. So it shows us quite clearly that once you enter the school, you have examinations. Those who are not at the school, do they have exams? The answer is no. They can enjoy. They will have sleeping up to 12 o'clock. No fajr, no dhuhr. When I say I'm a mu'min, I have to read fajr. Fajr for some is a problem, but for others they know it's part of my iman. May Allah make us from those who realize and who cherish the value of fajr and who enjoy getting up. Wallahi, my sisters, my daughters, it is something that will pay back completely the minute your eyes close in death. It will pay you back completely. And this is why we see people who've died in this world. They've passed away. Those who were better looking than us, those who were more powerful than us, those who had much more in authority than us, those who had much more in wealth than us, those who had more children and much more happiness in the world. When they died, where did they go? Did they take their children? Did they take their looks? Did they take their wealth? Did they take anything? Absolutely nothing. They went down. What helped them? Whatever they were given whilst they were alive, if they converted it into a currency that is valid in the hereafter, it would have helped them. If they did not do the conversion, then you can bring your pullers. They are not going to work here. They will ask you for US dollars. Am I right? You enter some of the businesses and the, you, you want to give them a, a Russian ruble or you want to give them one of those uh, Chinese RMBs, they call them. They will not accept them. They will reject them. They say, no, we want US dollars or we want rands sometimes. Am I right? Otherwise, they won't accept it. So you are foolish if you have a whole pile of something that people don't know, but it's a value, valuable item according to you. The people don't know its value. Similarly, in the Akhirah, your health, your wealth, everything was wasted completely. It's not going to come. But how you used it when you had it converts it into a currency known as deeds. D double E D S. Deeds. A deed is a currency that is valid when you die. A deed is a currency you need to amass whilst you are alive in order to be able to use it when you fly overseas, meaning when you die, so to speak. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So this is why when you have time, any minute that you have wasted, wallahi, you've wasted your currency. Because Allah says through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, five things, you need to seize them quickly before they are overtaken by another five. Your time you have, Allah will take it away. You will become occupied one day. Then you can sit back and say, hey, I had the time. Why didn't I do this? And why didn't I do that? Whose fault is it? You were there. You heard the hadith. You knew that time is not to be wasted. I want to achieve. Let me go. I will do this course. I will engage in this da'wah. I will do that school qualification. I will do that business. I will go to this madrasa. I will go to that masjid. I will meet with that person. Don't say, okay, tomorrow. Okay, the next day. Never leave today's work for tomorrow. You can do it now. Get up and do it here and now. 
That is Islam. Those are Muslimin. These are the qualities of the true believers. Wallahi al-Azim. No wastage of time. Number two, your young age. We are young, alhamdulillah. Young meaning we have the energy. We have the capacity. Use it. A day will come when I, I might not be able to walk. Whilst I can, let me do what I can. Whilst I am able, let me continue to do things. Whilst I am young, I will do things that I will not be able to do if Allah gives me age to see an old age. Subhanallah. So that is got to do with what? With your youth. Similarly, your health. Today I'm healthy. Tomorrow I'm not. It's part of the test of Allah. It is a guarantee that Allah brought you into the world to test you because if there was no test, why would we get sick? Why would we have problems? Why would we have difficulty? These are challenges and the winner is the one who knows how to answer the challenge. For example, when you go to school, it's a beautiful school. You want a high qualification. When you sit for the examination, they will ask you very, very difficult questions. Why? Not because they want to make your life difficult, but they want to see you have learned everything. You've covered the syllabus. You know absolutely everything. What is it that we can ask you in order to prove that you now know and you appreciate what you've learned. So this is the same with Islam. When you have been given something, do not waste your time. Make sure that you, you understand what I have here is going to go. It's definitely going to go. Allah gave me the health. Tomorrow, my knees might ache. May Allah grant shifa and cure to all those who are sick and ill in any way. Amen. So my sisters, my daughters, let me tell you, your health, it is going to go. Don't say, oh, you know, Sheikh is dooming us. I'm not dooming anyone. I'm saying it is going to go. It has to go. Your mothers, my own mother, everyone, their health is no longer how it used to be before. Am I right? So now, why should we just sit now and wait when we have the health and say, okay, now when I'm old, oh, when I was young, I should have done this and I could have done this and this is what I should have done. No, you are hearing it now. Do not waste your time. Wallahi, if you waste your time, you need to know one thing. There are millions of others just like you and even in a more difficult situation than you who are you? making good use of their health and their time and their youth and so on. So I spoke about your free time. Use it correctly. You have free time. Use it correctly. You have health. Use it correctly. You have been given young age. Use it correctly. Allah has given you, for example, wealth. If you have some money, use it in the, in the, in the correct way. Learn to budget. That is a problem we have not only in this country, but now across the globe, many countries. Do you know that in our country, we are actually have an advantage over some of the powerful countries. The reason is if you take a look at the USA or Britain or some of these first world countries, you find a lot of people, they are living in a beautiful house. They have a lovely car, but guess what? They have not paid for anything yet. Nothing. Do you know that? It's all on loans. Subhanallah. And they, they, they earn, for example, a thousand dollars, two thousand, five thousand, whatever they earn. And 90% of that, if not more goes in payment for what? Payment for the house, payment for the car, payment for this. They are living far higher than their actual capacity. But the system has enslaved them in such a way that it makes it fair seeming to them that this is the way things should be done. Whereas in this country, if someone has a phone, it is theirs, fully paid up for. If someone, for example, has a car, it is theirs, it is paid up for. It is their own motor vehicle, they owe the bank zero. If someone has a little house, no matter what type of a house it is, it is theirs in a lot of cases. And if they are paying rent, they at least know, look, I'm paying rental for this home. But they owe nobody any money at all, nothing. They are, it's their own, subhanallah. So, and if we do owe people a few owings here and there, it is not as big, it is not as large as what others owe. You know, when they lost their jobs a few years back in one of the countries, so many people committed suicide. Do you know why? Because what happened was something strange. When they lost their jobs, they could not pay for their houses, their cars. They could not pay for their uh, furniture in the house, the televisions and everything else. So uh, the first month came, they got warnings. Second month came, they were kicked out of the house because the man of the house wanted the money. And because it didn't come, they then said, okay, we will now sell the house and get our money back. And the same thing happened to everything else, including the house and uh, sorry, the car and the furniture and everything. They were left on the street without anything. What could they do? Yet they were leading a life just just the previous day, driving beautiful cars, doing so many things, showing and flashing. My sisters, my daughters, never ever be tempted to flash things that you have been given, even if they are your own in Islam.
Did you hear that? That is the difference between us and the kuffar out there who like to flash and show things every day a new pair of shoes, every day a new top, every day a new scarf. Every, I'm talking of some people who want to show their things. Every day something different, every day a new scent, a new this, a new watch, a new... That is the trend. They are struggling, they are suffering, they have no happiness, they have no contentment. Their husbands, they are changing them like they change clothes. It is sad, but it is a reality. Why? Because they really are people who are after the world in such a way that they are enslaved by it. Is that a Muslim woman? No. You are happy with the same thing you have. You can wear your, your clothing, your cloak. You just wear it neatly, put it on, be happy with the four pairs of clothes you have. The neighbor who has 400 pairs of clothes, which were perhaps from wherever we don't even know, let them live their own life. We do not need to lose our sleep by following them in the same way that they have lost their own sleep. What this means is when we compare our lives with others thinking that their lives are rosier and sweeter, we don't understand the fact that they are not sleeping at night will also come to us. The fact that their marriage is about to break will also come to us. So it comes with a price. You want to lead a simple life, you will have simplicity, happiness, contentment, look after your children correctly to fulfill whatever duty you have. If you're going to work, go and come back responsibly and so on. The minute our eyes turn and the minute we have role models besides those who are good Muslimin and Muslimat, what will happen? We will have to, we might end up getting what they got, but the baggage comes with. What is the baggage? Their problems, we will also have the same problems. Up to now, we have not faced those problems because we know and we understand Allah's plan. So remember something, when Allah has blessed you with wealth, use it wisely, learn to budget, do not waste, do not be extravagant. You do not need what your neighbor has, never. You do not need what another sister or brother has no all you need is what you precisely need for yourself and your children and whatever else is there you know your budget you know how to slice your piece of cake you do not need to have a big cake when you have not afforded it Allahu Akbar may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us I am being honest and I'm speaking of real current problems my sisters my daughters let me inform you the last thing that is mentioned in a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu when he says seize five things before they are overtaken by five situations is the issue of life. We are living. Let's seize it. Engage in tawbah. Ask Allah's forgiveness. You know, we are human beings. There are two ways of sinning. Two major ways of sinning. One is to sin in defiance of Allah. And the other is to sin out of human weakness. If a person defies Allah, they cannot call themselves mu'mineen. What is the meaning of defiance? When someone says, okay, um, Allah said it is haram to do this. I'm going to do it and let me see what Allah does. Astaghfirullah, that is defiance. None of us would do that because we are believers. Am I right? We are believers. We believe in Allah and His Rasul. None of us would do that because we believe in Allah and His Rasul. But something we need to know is out of human weakness. If someone says Allah has did this, Allah has said this is haram for example. But you know I was weak and I fell into it. In that case there is hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have mercy on you. You ask Allah's forgiveness. You regret what you have done. You turn to Allah. You promise Him not to do it again. And you try your best to stay on that straight path once again. Wallahi, I tell you, every sin comes with baggage. What is the baggage? It comes with some heavy baggage. It brings about depression and stress and problems and issues and loss of sustenance and so on. You know the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu He actually says, Inna rajula la yusibuhu. According to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu a person loses his sustenance, the barakah in his wealth because of the sins that he or she is committing. So we should not do that. The owner of rizq is Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إن الله هو الرزاق ذو القوة المتين. It is Allah who is the giver, the sustainer. He is الرزاق. He is the all-powerful, the strong, the mighty. Who is he? He is Allah. So we worship Allah and Allah alone. My beloved sisters and daughters, another very important quality that we need to instill in ourselves: the quality of patience, forbearance, what is known as sabr. Sabr is something you need no matter what you are doing in your life. You are married, you need sabr. You are not married, you need sabr. You are teaching, you need sabr. You are not teaching, you need sabr. You are employed, you need sabr. You are not employed, you need sabr. Everything, you need sabr. What is the meaning of sabr? You restrain yourself from that which is haram. You endure when it comes to that which is uh, 
obligatory upon you and at the same time you will have to bear patience or you will have to surrender to the decree of Allah when something you do not like has happened but it's Allah's choice so you know I, I'm sure a lot of you have had family members who've passed away. What could you do? You could say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We, we belong to Allah and to Him is our ultimate return. And we can perhaps read a dua or say something, Inna lillahi ma akhada wa lahu ma a'ta. Wa kullu shayin indahu bi ajalim musamma. That, you know, for Allah belongs that which He has taken, that which He gave in the first place. And everything according to Allah is with, comes with a specific time. It comes with an expiry date. I have an expiry date and so does everything else, including the battery in this torch right now. Subhanallah. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His decree is final. I cannot have a say in the date of my death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness the day He takes us away. So bear patience. Be forbearant. Do not want to break a marriage just because of one problem you have. Two problems you have. Five problems you have. So what? Others are suffering 50 problems. They are still working on their marriages. Remember this. Your marriage will not be rosy. Why? It's a test from Allah. Marriage is not just a honeymoon. I need to go and start saying, right, that's my man. And this is what it is. And I'm walking around in town. Everyone must see me, smell me, look at me. And my hair needs to be different every other day. That's not Muslimin. Wallahi, it's a fact. People are wasting $35 a week on their hair. Yet, they cannot even afford to buy food for their own families. This is what's going on in this country, Wallahi. People are ready to buy nails, to add on top of these nails of theirs. But when it comes to the evening, they will say there is no food in this house. This is what is happening. Wallahi, it's a fact. And this is the issue. We are people who are content. Consider it a test from Allah. Things will flash on the side. Things will flash on the side. Never ever turn to what is flashing. Lead your real life. That's all fake. Let me tell you. Sometimes people ask, well, why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts on, on the sides of what I have so many different temptations? And he says, this is a temptation. That's a temptation. Stay away from it. Well, if he wanted me to stay away from it, why did he put it there in the first place? That's what some people ask. Well, I can tell you. When you know the answer in mathematics, still they give you multiple choice. You know what is multiple choice? They glare the wrong answers in your face in order to test you. You know the right answer. Put a tick on the right answer. For example, if I were to tell you 10 multiplied by 10, A, 1, B, 10, C, 100, D, 1000. What would you say? Subhanallah. These are wrong answers. You can't say if you wanted me to answer it right, why did you give me three other wrong options? You can't say that because I'm testing you. I know you know what is right. So now I'm showing you everything that is wrong. You are supposed to be a believer, powerful enough to be able to say, I'm putting my tick on the right answer. Here it is. It is answer number C, tick. There you are. Now you have won. So don't say, oh, what about all these other people? Forget about them. They are ticking D. They are ticking A. They are ticking B. At the end of the day, when they collect all those papers and there's the kitab comes, Allah says, those who are given their results in the right hand, the book in the right hand, they will be so happy, so proud. They will say, oh, here, read my book. See, see my results. Look at it. Beautiful. And those who are given in the wrong hand, the left hand, they will say, we wish we were not even here today. We wish we were dead. Those are the ones who are ticking all the wrong answers. But it is our duty to try and reach out to them, to correct them, to remind them, to tell them, to tap them, to say, you know, my sister, this is what Islam is all about. Do not spread Islam in an embarrassing way or in a way that is uh, not befitting a Muslim spreading the goodness of the deen. We want to spread Islam, but in a good way, live as a Muslim. They will see your happiness. They will see your contentment, your concentration on matters that is that are supposed to be within your concentration. So concentrate on these things. Be patient. Everything you do in life, one day it will go wrong. Besides your link with Allah. Every day you do in life, one day it has to go wrong. Allah will test you. You know, you come to work every day at eight o'clock. Okay, for example, there will come a time, there will come a time when something happened to the combi, something happened to the transport, something happened here, you were late. It's and how people deal with it is all your tests. You were not late because you wanted to be late because Allah is now testing you. Hey, 
today you will be late nothing of your choice when you go to work they will shout you they will scold you they might cut your salary they will, let's see what you do it's part of your test that's life that's the challenge so when you come if you start swearing shouting hating you have lost the test you ticked on the b instead of the right answer now if you come back you apologize you say look i'm very sorry they say we're going to cut your salary try to explain to them in a nice way and try to say something in a, in a good way still they don't agree say okay no problem what can i do you know i'm I, inshallah next time it won't happen then you ask allah oh allah guide these people they are cutting my salary nothing of me but you did not cause a commotion one day they will realize and understand ah this person here you know what they are honest one day after 10 years 15 years you may get a promotion something may happen you might not get it but when you go down into your grave allah knows what happened that is your jannah allah knows what happened so it was never between us and them it is between us and allah all the time remember this these are the qualities of dua. These are the people who, who will enter Jannah with ease. And I haven't even spoken of many more qualities. But this quality of sabr is something very, very interesting. Another very important quality, my sisters, my daughters, read and educate yourselves. Listen to things. Today, there are CDs that are readily available, DVDs. There are so many different formats of uh, being able to learn the knowledge. Please try and do something. Try and continue learning until the point of death. Learn and learn and learn more. Learn from the source. Try and get what is right. Continue going A, B, C. Let's get right up to Z and even beyond. Subhanallah. And we need to constantly learn. Never ever think I know enough. And this is it. Now I'm a big sheikh or I'm a big sheikha or I'm a great imam or whatever else it is. And that's it. I just need to stand up and issue decrees and decisions for everybody else. No. Continue. Become humble in your knowledge. You know, sometimes people have wealth. The best of those who have wealth are those who are humble. You agree? Sometimes people have knowledge. Knowledge comes with exactly the same arrogance as wealth. Same, 100%. Knowledge and wealth are two things that are gifts of Allah, both on either side. They can either come with humbleness or with arrogance. The best person with knowledge is he or she who is humble, humble, humble. You mix with people, you interact, you talk to them like they are your bosses. Finished. They don't need to know you are some big shot. They don't need to know that. When, you, when it comes to delivering the goods, you deliver them. But otherwise, you are an ordinary human being like everybody else. Because knowledge is actually an amana, just like wealth is an amana. How you used it, how you achieved it, how did you disseminate it, how did you give it to others, how did you benefit others with it, all that test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember this, it is something powerful. Seek knowledge and continue seeking knowledge. Do not think I've graduated, it's fine. Now I go back to my home area and I do things. No, keep on learning. Your phones that you have with you, a lot of you have internet access and that internet access you have on it, different pages. Find out what are the good pages, where can I read, how can I improve my knowledge, how can I increase so tomorrow you can spread the deal. Be kind to your neighbors and to everyone else. They will see the goodness in you. They will be inclined towards the deen. Purify your own knowledge. Today we read Quran, okay? So sometimes our Quran, we need to understand no matter how well you read your Quran, it is like flying in an aircraft. The minute you stop in mid-air, your plane will drop. You need to continue flying in order to move on that altitude. You need to continue flying. The engine needs to be on constantly in order to be able to move forward. The minute you turn off the engines, doom, you come dropping. The same applies with your Quran, with your A'mal, your deeds. Your Quran, you need to improve it every time. Don't think, I know, I was first in class. No, no, no. The standards, however they were, even if they were the best, without that constant improvement, there are certain things I have learned and continue learning now. And, con and I'm so happy to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has blessed us with this. So this is why I continue learning every time. Wherever there are seminars, wherever there is something to be done, make sure that you try and take part as, as much as you can and make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue using you and I for this deal. Because remember one thing, if you are going to turn away and you are not going to serve the deen, Allah does not need you and I. Allah can replace you with someone else. So sometimes we have this feeling, ah, me, I'm going to leave. Me, I'm going to do this. Ah, me, I'm not going to go there. I'm going. We have this feeling. It is also one of those wrong answers that keep flashing to us. Don't tick the wrong letter. Not at all. Make sure you understand. If I am not in the picture, 
Allah will replace me with someone else. One day after 10 years, I'm going to see someone else doing a better job than me. And I'm going to regret in my heart to say, I was here one day. Why didn't I continue working and doing good and so on and improving and whatever voluntary, whatever deeds they are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. I have spoken for exactly 29 minutes and I will cut there. We ask Allah to bless you all and to bless us all. Jazakumullahu khaira. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.